Hey guys, Lunch Money Comics here. So I'm at another indoor flea market, this time in Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, I've been here before, they do have comic books, but last time I was here, they were uh, a lot of the vendors were closed. So I'm hoping to have some better luck today. See you in there. Like really, do you know your artist really good? Yeah, I've been doing comics 38 years, but I, was, I had a comic shop back in 89 to 92. We had a comic shop, Silver Age. I wish you'd come earlier. It's right there. It's right there. I put it up there for you. I got a nice, I'm, I'm setting things up for the holidays. I just want to take a picture of these because I'm just, yeah, next sure. time I see you, they might be no, sitting around. there you go. Thanks. Unless he buys them. He might, yeah, you a DC guy? Oh, boy. I wish I knew. I mean, this one's crazy uh, good, he too. He wiped out all the Silver Age. Got all right, guys, that was crazy. Um, I bumped into a guy I usually see selling at flea markets, but evidently he sets up here, like, in between flea markets. And uh, he had a whole new stack of Silver Age comics. And uh, pretty much sight unseen, I just bought six of them plus one Bronze Age one. Didn't look them up to see if they were keys, but I wanted them. So quick impromptu buy. I hope I'm not going to regret paying the money for these. We'll talk about them when we get home. See you there. So I ended up with a pretty good comic haul at that indoor flea market. But before I talk about them, just a quick reminder, if you like this sort of stuff, go down, hit that like button, leave me a comment. I love reading through them and definitely consider subscribing. I try to put content out every single week. So hit that bell button and you will be notified every time I post a new video. So I've been to this indoor flea market one other time, and there's actually a lot of comic books there. A lot of stuff I didn't show on the footage, and that's because I showed up about 15 minutes before they were closing, and a lot of the vendors were like putting curtains up. So I didn't get to look through all the big long boxes. They have lots of like dollar boxes and things like that. So I just kind of made like one quick pass around, saw some comics here and there, nothing great. But as I was about to leave, I saw a glass case, and within that I saw a stack of comics with a really old Captain America on the cover. And then I saw the vendor, and it's a guy that I see at lots of flea markets around New England, and uh, evidently this is his like permanent setup. So, you know, I know he was kind of in a rush to get out of there. I asked to look at the books, and he took them out, and um, there was basically like six or seven good Marvel Silver Age books, and there were four DC ones. Now, being a Marvel collector primarily, I was mostly interested in the Marvel books, but the more I looked at the DC books, the more I liked them because the condition was so good. And then a gentleman walked up behind me with his family and his eyes lit up when he saw the DC books because he is a DC collector. So at that point, I didn't really feel bad sort of just buying the Marvel books, although I did have a little bit of remorse afterwards, which I'll talk about in a second. So what I ended up with was six Silver Age Captain America books and one Spider-Man key from the Bronze Age. So let's start with the Captain America books. 
Um, Captain America, of course, you know, being a golden age hero, you know, started in World War II. You know, he was around for a long time in the 40s and 50s and was brought back uh, in, in the 60s, you know, as part of the Avengers. And then he appeared in, you know, Tales of Suspense for a long time, you know, often sharing that title with, you know, Iron Man. Um, but he started his own series uh, at, later on in the 60s, and it started with Captain America 100, right? So they had Tales of Suspense 99, then Captain America started his first solo issue at 100. So I have right here 102, so this would make it his third appearance. This is from 1968. This is a really cool Jack Kirby cover. Um, the condition's pretty bad. You know, it um, definitely has some warping on it. It's discolored. You know, it has a date mark on the top. I actually kind of like the date marks that always... Uh, I think it's actually pretty cool and it just kind of grounds it more, you know, in that era. I can kind of picture someone, you know, buying this off of a newsstand and, you know, reading it. So, um, really cool book. You know, it's early Captain America, but not necessarily a key. Um, same thing with this one. Here's another uh, Jack Kirby cover from 1968. This is 108. It has the Trapster on the cover. I think the Trapster is usually a Spider-Man villain. So, really cool cover there. We end up with a uh, 116. So this one is from 1969. This is covered by uh, Gene Colan. Um, this is a really cool cover because it has most of the Avengers on the cover with him and it has the red skull in the corner. And this book's in actually really good shape. I also really like the trade dress that has like the, uh, the, the American flag, you know, the red, white, and blue. It just has a great look. I really like uh, this comic book. I was also hyper aware that the next issue here, number 117, is the first appearance of the Falcon. That's sort of why I wanted to grab all these books. I was hoping there'd be some like early Falcon-related keys that would make these comic books worth more. I didn't really hit pay dirt there. I mean, these are still pretty cool comic books, but you know, I did get one with the Falcon in it, but he doesn't really appear in a lot of these uh, comic books I grabbed. Still, very cool looking comic. Next up, we have Captain America 129. This one's from 1970 with art by Gene Colan. Again, the really cool red, white, and blue trade dress. We have the red skull on the cover. Pretty neat. Next up, we have Captain America number 132. Um, this one is from 1970 as well. It has a cover by Marie Severin. And uh, it's a really cool cover, you know, with Cap fighting Bucky. I think it's in a flashback, him fighting Bucky Barnes. You have Modoc down there in the lower corner. You know, and despite the fact that this one has, you know, like the, the date written right in the between the two guys, um, it's actually probably in the best shape of the bunch. The colors are really bright. Again, it has that trade dress I really enjoy. This is a very cool comic book. You know, again, not a big key or anything, but just an awesome looking book. Very happy to have it. And finally, we have Captain America in the Falcon, number 137. This one is from 1971, cover art by Sal Buscema. And uh, this is a really great cover. You have Spider-Man looming over, you know, Cap and Falcon. This one is listed as a key as the first meetup between Spider-Man and the Falcon. And a uh, really great looking comic book. Uh, dark cover, you know, it can show a lot of damage. And the only thing that kind of bums me out is that this probably is the one in worst condition of all the ones I got. It has a chip in the upper corner here. You know, um, there's lots of foxing in the white lettering of the trade dress. There is, you know, the date written there in the T. But still, really great looking comic book. It presents really well with its dark cover. The colors are still pretty good despite its condition. So very happy to have this one. So besides these six Silver Age Captain America books, I did get one more Marvel book, this time from the Bronze Age. This is Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man, number one. It's from 1976, also cover art by Sal Buscema. Shows Spidey fighting the tarantula. Of course, you know, this is Spider-Man's uh, second ongoing series. So this is the first issue of that series. And, uh, you know, at first blush, the condition of this book was fantastic. The colors are bright, no chipping, no spine ticks that I could see. When I got home, I was a little disappointed to find that the upper staple looks like it was uh, removed or reset, and, um, and it had pulled out a little bit, not only on the inside pages, but also there's a little tiny chip on the spine right at the upper staple. So a little bit of a disappointment because I thought it was like a really, really clean book when I bought it, but still really cool to have. It's one that I've wanted to add to my Spider-Man collection. So pretty cool comic book in its own right, and really happy to have this. So all together, I ended up with seven comic books. I got the Spectacular Spider-Man number one and the six Silver Age Captain Americas. Now let's talk a second about what I paid for these. Like I said, I felt like I was kind of rushed and you know, I was definitely negotiating, you know, getting all the comic books and I sort of ended up settling on these seven and I paid a grand total of $120. Now, I think that's actually pretty close to retail. That ends up, at least I justified it as this being a $30 book and each of these being $15 each. However, you know, when I got home and looked through and none of them were really, you know, uh, big keys that were worth a lot of money, but mostly, you know, when I opened them and took them out of the bags and really inspected them, 
the condition really wasn't as good as when I first uh, saw them in the flea market. Uh, and then there's all sorts of little quirks here, like my favorite one, the, probably the best cover of the bunch. You know, it's missing a staple entirely, as in it never had one. You know, it came out of the, you know, the production line with only one staple in it. This one, there's no holes or anything. There was never a staple there. Not that big of a deal. But, you know, there was lots of little things like that that had I taken the time to really open the bags up and inspect them, maybe there's like one or two of these I might not have bought. But still, I mean, they're really cool comic books. I'm happy to add them to my collection. You know, it's not always about having a key or having a big ticket item. It's about just, you know, filling out your collection and having cool stuff. Um, I haven't showed these to my son yet, but my son loves Captain America and he loves Silver Age. I'm pretty excited for him to take a look at these. You know, maybe that'll make this a little bit more palatable for me. You know, if I see the look on his face when I show him like this really cool comic book. So, you know, not the best deal. Not certainly not, you know, one of the best lunch money deals I've ever had at a flea market, but really cool comic books notwithstanding. And I'm happy to add them to my collection at the very least. So there is one more thing we need to talk about and it's those DC books. So there were four DC books. They were all the Brave and the Bold Batman stories, all from the 60s, you know, Batman teaming up with a different member of the Justice League. I've always said I need to show more DC love on this channel, and I love Silver Age books, so these immediately jumped out to me. But the biggest thing was the condition. They were all in great condition, but one of them, and I'll put a picture next to me, one of them was uh, number 82. It was a team up of Batman and Aquaman. It was a Neil Adams cover. I think it was also like a minor key. And this book was beautiful for having a really dark cover and for its age, I mean, there were barely any spine ticks or chips or anything that you could see, no color breaks. And I immediately wanted it. But as I was looking at it and sort of negotiating, you know, like the price of all these books, a guy walked up behind me and I guess he's a client, you know, the, the seller recognized him immediately and he's a big DC collector, and he immediately gravitated towards them, and I didn't really want to compete with him, so I just bought my Marvel books, and I decided to be happy. But as I got back to my car, I did have some regret, especially for that number 82. The book looked awesome. So I did have some remorse, uh, but as I'm in my car, looking at the comic books, right after that last footage you saw, there's a knock on my window, and it's this guy who I, you know, was the DC collector, and he came out and he showed me this number 82 with Aquaman on the cover. And he had the biggest smile on his face. He was so happy to add it to his collection. I immediately had no regrets. I was so happy for him. And what was great is we had a conversation right then and there about comic books. You know, I told him about my channel. He was telling me what he collects. He was saying he actually had a lot of comics he was willing to sell or trade. So we actually exchanged numbers. Um, big shout out to Isaac. You know, that was a great pickup, man. You got an awesome comic book. And I hope to meet up with you soon. And I always say this on the channel, guys. You never know about the connections you're going to meet. Uh, even if we don't trade comic books or sell comic books or buy comic books, it's always great to have someone just to talk about comic books. So great meeting you, Isaac, and great score. So that's it, guys. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think about what I picked up. Especially let me know about, you know, what you think of the price I paid. I kind of feel like I paid a little too much for all these. And um, definitely let me know if you think I should have got the DC Comics. I already know the answer to that, especially for all the people who want more DC love in this channel. I should have bought them just for you. But, um, I do have a little bit of regret on those. I think Isaac definitely got the better deal of the day. But definitely let me know down in the comments, guys. I love to hear, you know, your input. You can't hurt my feelings. You know, definitely let me know what you think of these books and if you think I paid too much. Thank you guys so much for watching. It really means a lot to me. In the meantime, I hope you keep hunting for comic books in strange and unusual places, and I will see you next time at the flea markets.